Hi, I'm Ian and I'm the Lonely Chef. And we have a fabulously funny show for you in the next half an hour. At the end of the show, there's a number and I want you to jot it down and, and call me because, well, I'm single and I'm looking for a date and possibly a relationship and who knows, maybe even marriage. I'm looking to meet somebody special. I'm fabulously wealthy. I want to settle down and I want to share this wealth with that special person and just live happily ever after. So enjoy the show and hopefully we'll meet. Until we do, goodbye. Oh, uh, one more thing. <laughs> I do happen to lie an awful lot. <laughs> Lonely, I've been searching for so long. Lonely, only hoping you're the one who will change my life and make these dreams come true. to a club last night. I gotta tell you something, there's a phenomena happening out there. I'm not sure if it's a little bit beyond me or not, but uh, well, it's a kind of a punk club, you know, grunge music and all that sort of stuff. And I will say it was fun, don't get me wrong, it was lots of fun. Uh, music was sort of hard to sort of comprehend because the diction was a little poor, but the, uh, the, the, the strange thing was that the people were very friendly, but they're friendly in a different way. You know, like when you go in, the first thing that happened, I paid two bucks to get into the cover charge and I'd driven my sports car 30 miles all the way to get to this uh, little club. And I paid my two bucks and uh, that's after parking the sports car 30 miles away from the club again and walking back 30 miles. Anyway, I went in and paid my two bucks as I said and there was this gorgeous girl there and I thought, well, hey, you know, I'll go up and introduce myself, which I did. And she spat at me. So I thought, well, you know, uh, did I say something wrong? And she spat at me again. And I said, well, you know, is it my breath? Or do I have B.O. or something? And she spat at me again. And I said, well, well stop it, stop it. What do you keep doing that for? And she says, well, I, I like you. <laughs> so uh, I said, well, do you mind if I spit at you? So she said, okay, go ahead. So I went, like that I went. And my spit actually traveled about 30 yards past her. <laughs> uh, hit this other guy, and that's the guy that put this pin through my ear. Anyway, uh, we started spitting at one another for a, a while, and, and it's strange. And, and this went on for about a half an hour. And then she says, well, why don't you come over and dance with me? So I went up to this band and it was all kinds of punk stuff and, and grunge music. And we were body slamming and that's why I hurt so much. I mean, I really hurt. <laughs> well, anyway, I invited her to my place and she's coming over. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do, but what the heck, it's exciting and it's fun. So stay tuned and we'll be right back in just a couple of minutes.
Well, I tell you, I had a real problem deciding what to cook for this particular lady friend of mine that's coming through the door. But shish kebabs can be done just about anywhere. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do shish kebabs. But it's important to know some of the cuts of meat that you should use in shish kebabs. And again, I like to use things like tenderloins. These are the tenderloins, uh, you can see. And you can, you can ask for these at any, any grocery store. Just ask for the tenderloin, beef tenderloin. It's a delicious tender cut of meat. And um, cooked properly, it just goes uh, and tastes wonderful as it goes down. Uh, to do proper, uh, whether it's fondues or shish kebabs or whatever, you need to have a really sharp knife with this meat and um, just slice it up into good, thick cubes. Uh, the meat, as you can see, is pretty easy to cut. Just put it into nice chunks. You can see how uh, easily it cuts, and it's very tender when it's cooked. Uh, you know, this, this dating game is quite a puzzle to me. Um, and I've been trying to meet young ladies for a long time. Um, when I was uh, the champion Olympic swimmer for, uh, <laughs> for uh, Ireland, I was uh, swimming the 30-mile uh, long-distance <laughs> event. And there was a swimmer there that I met that uh, she, she showed me a few things about life because she actually won the race, although I was the champion at the time. Um, <laughs> because uh, there was a couple of people that got into difficulties in the heavy 30-foot seas. And um, so I had, to, uh, I had to sort of carry them as I was racing. But um, she did teach me something about the metaphysical, the, the being uh, of one with nature, where your mind goes into this special area of metaphysical and physical all coming together at once. You know, and this is what that girl reminded me of last night. When we were slam dancing, after about, after about five or six hours, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> and I said, well, why is this? As I spat at her, just to remind her that I really did like her. And she said, well, uh, you know, you're at one, man. You're at one. I mean, like, everything. I mean, like, wow. I mean, and I knew, I understood what she was saying. That's a funny <laughs> thing. So anyway, oops, there goes my steering. That guy's going to want it back. Anyway. The, uh, the thing about this is that I became aware for the first time in my life that there is this ability to become one with the metaphysical and the physical at the same time. This is where your mind shuts out pain and, you, and, and your ying becomes one with your yang. And when this happens, it's exciting because your sensory perceptions are sort of exploded. It's like, it's like squealing from a microphone into a speaker. It, it, it's, it's weird stuff. I, I, I don't know if I'm explaining this properly, but all I'm saying is that I'm going to give you a demonstration in a few minutes of the metaphysical and the physical coming together. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to plunge this knife into my body. I'm going to plunge this knife, and I'm not going to feel a thing. But what I need you to do is, all of you people out there in TV land, and all of the crew here, and all of the people in the audience, I need you to help me do this by chanting the zing and the zong so that my ying and yang help my metaphysical and my physical come together and I don't feel any pain. Now, if this isn't done properly, I'm going to be in deep problems. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll finish just cutting these and we'll start putting them onto the sticks in just a few minutes. Now, I've already got some water boiling. We're going to cook up some rice. This is a very healthy meal, too. It doesn't take long to, uh, to cook. And you just broil them in the oven, and uh, you just uh, start sticking them onto sticks. You see, you just have... Uh... Actually, I, I, I met another fella last night that was wearing a piece of beef in his ear. <laughs> I wanted to take him home for a midnight snack. <laughs> Peppers, onions. Uh, green peppers, red. You can make these as colorful as you want. You can put some tomato in there. Ah, doesn't that look pretty? Another piece of beef. And uh, this is shish kebabs. Now we're going to cook up some rice with this. We're also going to uh, color the rice a little by adding a vegetable. And uh, we're also going to uh, uh, put some uh, special little herbs and spices onto this thing that'll just give it that little zing. Uh, we'll continue with some mushrooms. And basically what we do is we make up a whole tray of these. We make up about a dozen for two or three people. And uh, you can have a lot of fun with that. 
All right, well, I guess uh, this is how you've uh, made up one. Let's put a little bit of pepper on there and add a little more color. I don't have a green one either, so here we go. And what shall I put on there? Another piece of beef. That's almost a meal in itself. Then you put those, about a dozen of them, into uh, the broiler, and uh, you're set. Uh, we'll show you how to put the spices on, show you what it looks like on the broiler in just a couple of minutes. But let's get the rice started. The water's already boiling. We'll put this down here. We'll get the rice started. It's uh, two cups of rice, two cups of water. Easy to remember. It's equal. All right, well, I guess we're just about ready for that moment in time when my zing and my zong and my ying and my yang and the metaphysical and the physical are going to be coming together. Now, you saw how sharp this knife was. I'm going to show you again just how sharp this little baby is. Watch how it slices through something as tough as, say, an onion. Okay, here comes the onion. Watch this. Now watch as I plunge it through the onion into the wood. There's nothing phony about this lonely chef. <laughs> All right. Now this is the moment when I want everybody out there to come together, everybody in the studio here, all of the audience, all of the crew, we have to do this special chant. Are you ready for this? Because this is going to be very, very dangerous. Now don't do this at home. I am a professional at what I've done and what I'm doing now. I mean, I've studied for 30 years. So <laughs> let's, let's deal with this properly. Make sure that nobody tries this at home unless you're a trained professional like myself. Are you ready? The chant is umba, 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 one. Umba, 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 two. Umba, 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 three. Umba, 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 four. Okay, that's good. You got that now? Now we're gonna get ready to plunge the knife into me, and we're gonna have all of that energy coming in to make this thing work. Are you ready? Are you ready? Out there in TV land, are you ready? Umba, 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 one. Umba, 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 two. Umba, 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 three. Ready? Uh, umba, umba, four. Here I go. I feel it. Umba, 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 six. Umba, 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 Maybe we should have gone to a couple of hundred. <laughs> Actually, it's just a trick one. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes and we'll finish this off. So we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Well, this is what body slamming was long, like last night. It's just sort of people. <laughs> Holy cow. Did you see that? That's exactly what it was like. It was crazy. Anyway, I'm back here and I'm cooking up dessert for this young lady. And what we're going to do is take this pineapple and we're going to cut it in half and fill it with some nice strawberries. Now, the shish kebabs are cooking away nicely in the oven. They'll be out in just a second. We have rice. We have some vegetables ready to mix, so we'll be doing that over the next few minutes. But pineapples, they're good for you any time of year. Make sure that you always eat pineapples. It'll put hair on your chest. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that delicious? Now what we're going to do is we're going to carve out a little of this and stuff it with strawberries, pineapple chunks, whipped cream, and a little Grand Marnier. Doesn't that sound absolutely wonderful? Just scoop that out. Here it comes. Very simple. Anybody can do this. Just need a real sharp knife. Now save the, uh, the core here. A lot of people throw the core away, but there's nothing the matter with keeping the core. And this is such a, a, a nice uh, looking dish when you finish it. There, it's easy to do. 
All right. Now, we have our two halves of pineapple, and they're hollowed out. We'll just cut this up into nice chunks. Now, you see me messing an awful lot around. I, I mess a lot around on this show, and uh, don't worry about it. It's all, you know, just part fun stuff. But we are serious about our menus. They are good menus. And uh, if you're interested in them, uh, you feel free to call at uh, the 800 number at the end of the show because it's a little more sensible way of actually getting the true menu. And, and they do look good. They're always uh, quick to prepare. And uh, I tell you, if you're romancing uh, either gender, uh, it's a lot of fun to do something like this. You have a nice meal and uh, you prepare it. It's uh, inexpensive, uh, as I said, and quick. You can uh, put these together in usually under half an hour. And um, they always look good. So phone that number and uh, get the recipe book or even a videotape of this show if you wanted to put it in your library. Now, I do have some frozen strawberries here. Uh, we'll just get this out of the way here so we can see these properly. Um, the frozen strawberries, uh, I like these for use in uh, desserts like this because what we do is we let these sit for anywhere up to 12 hours. If you're, you can do this a day before your date. And what happens is that the juices from the strawberries start to mix with the Grand Marnier. And uh, it just looks absolutely delicious and it tastes even better. So doesn't that look good? Now we'll have a little Grand Marnier in here. Let me just wipe my hands here with something. There we go. Little Grand Marnier. Well, I spent 30 years as president of this corporation. I, I never designed a better lid. <laughs> Got to do that before I die. All right, you pour a little Grand Marnier over that. Now, doesn't that look absolutely delicious? Just fill that up. It's the nectar of love. Ooh. Delicious. Now, you can just smell those aromas of fresh pineapple and Grand Marnier. It's, it's, it's sensual. <laughs> it's, it's erotic. Anyway, I'm going to hopefully uh, surprise this lady with this dessert and some of the other stuff that we have. Uh, so let's go over to the stove right now, and we'll just finish off the, uh, the rice. Uh, we have here some rice. Uh, we're going to put this into, uh, or mix rather, the peas into the rice. This gives it a sort of bit of color, and it allows you to provide a nice bed for the shish kebabs to be on. So let me grab a colander here. I think I have one over here. There it is. OK. Just shake those out. Mix them right in. Just stir that up. Now you start to have a very colorful uh, bed on which to lay your shish kebabs. So we'll get a nice little dessert tray or some sort of tray here. I know there's one around somewhere. Well, I know it's here somewhere. <laughs> this is television land, folks. OK, here we go. Well, I'm back, I'm back, I'm really back. I was doing some slam dancing with 30 people in the wings here. <laughs> anyway, this is what we're going to do. We'll put this rice uh, over here. Just make a nice, nice bed of rice here. And you can season this with a little soy if you wish. But it makes it very, very colorful. Now I have to get my little moo moo gloves. Oh, one more thing. We're going to also make uh, a little whipped cream here. So uh, we'll put some sugar into the blender. <laughs> I'm having one heck of a time today trying to get everything working for me. But it's one of those years. As I was uh, in the Navy for 30 years <laughs> and uh, in charge of the submarines, uh, we had a lot of pressure, but what the heck. Uh, I'm used to it. If I can't open the cream or find a tray, what the heck? I'll go back to the Navy for another 30 years and toughen up some more. <laughs> cream. We put the sugar in. This is going to be kind of a sweet thing, but I thought that with this young lady coming in, uh, she, I think, likes cream for some reason. And um, I thought it might be kind of a, <laughs> I thought it might be kind of an interesting uh, dessert addition. So we'll just put this in the blender and crank that up. 
Just let that go. And we'll get our shish kebabs out of the oven. We'll set this all up. Now I got my little moo moo. No, I got other gloves here. Yeah, I got other gloves. You have to get in the mood for this. those babies. <laughs> right. Put these under here. 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 Whoa. Here. Here. And here. Now, a little bit of whipped cream and we're out of here. We'll be back in two minutes. What's it all about, but uh, being deadly? Why don't you have a seat? Oh. <laughs> we have it! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you having, man? Chewing gum. Hey, this looks good. Neat. <laughs> I've been eating in a week, you know. Oh, well, hey, dig in. <laughs> hey, we can tourist each other later. <laughs> Well, it could Make be it. kind of interesting in certain ways, I guess. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, well, listen, dig in. I've got great desserts for you. And... Mm. Oh, boy. Mm. I don't know about this punk stuff. You know what Try... you know, I like? You have you a strong feminine side. <laughs> you know, like the men I usually meet. For a copy of the program, or the Lonely Chef Cookbook, or to be my special guest, call 1 800 665 Chef. Or if you'd like to write to me personally, my address is P.O. Box 740, Everson, Washington, 98247. And when taping The Lonely Chef, I stay at the beautiful Fantasyland Hotel and Resort, which is part of the adventure of the West Edmonton Mall. Join me. <laughs>